In the world of consumer 3D printing, Prusa rapidly established itself as among the best in a field of no-name hacked-together machines all sharing similar concepts and components but offering wildly different levels of performance. The Prusa Mark III and Mark III S were almost certainly the best printers of their day, but the new Prusa XL hasn't quite established itself in the same way. It was announced back in November of 2021 at an eye-watering starting price of $2,000. Despite that, I ordered one immediately, and yet I only just received it last month. Was it worth the two-year wait? In some ways, absolutely. In others, not so much. Let's talk about the details. The biggest change in this new printer is right there in the name, XL. This thing is way bigger than the Mark III or the Mark IV, or indeed the Prusa Mini that came before. How much bigger? Well, this is a Mark III S print sheet, and this is the print sheet of the XL. Maximum print volume in the XL is 36 centimeters cubed, or about 14 inches in every dimension. That's more or less 50% larger than the volume offered by the Mark III or the Mark IV. But there are plenty of changes beyond the size of that build plate. That build surface is now made up of 16 panels that can be heated independently, ensuring optimal temperatures only where you need them. Printing something small, the machine will put it in a corner and only heat up that corner of the bed. But the bigger change might be in how that bed moves or the fact that it moves at all. In Prusa's prior printers, the bed stays still and the print head goes up or down as whatever you're printing grows. In the XL, the print head moves X and Y, but the bed moves down as your print continues. Why? Well, that's because the XL doesn't have just one head, but up to five. It's a key part of what makes this printer special and we'll get into all that in just a minute, but first, let's talk about putting this thing together. The XL is available as a kit or fully assembled. The kit is cheaper for one thing, with a starting price of $1,999, while a fully assembled version is $500 more. Now, not only do you save money with the kit, but given how often these things need attention, honestly, it's a good idea to go through the assembly process so you know how the whole thing fits together. The assembly process from a giant box of parts to a functional printer took me just north of four hours, and honestly, it wasn't that hard. Prusa's online instructions are excellent, and you can read discussions as you go and comments from other assemblers on every step of the way. After that, in a quick firmware update, plus a lot of self-calibrations that the XL took care of on its own, I was ready to start printing. My first print was this test grid here, which is really just designed to show that everything is calibrated properly, and it came out perfectly. On older printers, you can spend hours fiddling with layer heights, dialing in your perfect squish one hundredth of a millimeter at a time. This thing was perfect on the first shot. I moved on to that, to this kind of printer torture test, which I printed using the included roll of PLA that comes with the printer. Now, given this was printed at high speed and using the 0.6 millimeter nozzle, which honestly doesn't give you much fine detail, I'm actually really impressed by how well this came out. The bridging in particular is really clean. There's even not much stringing, but the part that doesn't come out very well is this kind of lollipop looking thing. I think that comes down to the flex of the PLA and the fact that I was printing at high speed, and that's why it looks pretty janky. I think if I printed at a lower speed, it would have looked a lot better. Feeling emboldened by that, I dialed up to something bigger, which is this box designed to hold all the tools that come with the printer. And again, this came out beautifully. The box looks fantastic, and it's also a nice way to highlight the XL's biggest hallmark feature, multi-material printing. Now, remember how I said that the XL can have up to five print heads? To me, that is the XL's most important feature. FDM or extrusion 3D printers like this can use many different types of plastic filaments depending upon what you need. However, each different plastic requires different temperatures, print speeds, and other parameters that make them difficult to mix. While other consumer printers do enable you to mix and match filament colors like this, most do it by running different color filaments through the same head, which often results in a lot of waste as you need to purge one color out before the next one can begin. With the XL, it has separate heads, so there's less waste, but more importantly, this allows you to use different types of plastic simultaneously. That's the thing that I was most excited about, especially when it comes to supports. Now, if you're not into 3D printing, a quick explanation. In FDM printers like this, you're building up models layer by layer. That means you can only put plastic down on top of something else. If part of your model has nothing but air beneath it, like the stomach on our pooch here, 
what you need to use is something that's called supports, a sacrificial plastic that only exists to hold up your model as it prints. Once the model is finished, these supports need to be broken away, but since the plastic sticks to itself, this can be a difficult thing to do without, for example, breaking the legs of our little dude off here. But by having different types of plastic filament, you can create supports that will not stick to the model. You can even use water-soluble filaments that you can simply rinse away. Those, though, are pretty expensive. For this dog, I used PETG supports, and it was much easier to pull it away. In fact, it all came off in basically one big hunk here. If you are frequently doing complex models that require a lot of supports and complex shapes, this right here could mean a lot less cleaning up and save you a ton of time. While all my single material prints work flawlessly, it probably took me four or five failed prints before I finally got this multi-material stuff to work. Proust's documentation wasn't honestly much help, which made for a lot of trial and error as I tried different speeds and temperatures before I finally found what seems like the sweet spot. Another frustration, you can't mix nozzle sizes. That would be an absolutely killer feature if you could lay down your supports and the internal structure of your model fast with a large nozzle and then switch to smaller nozzles for the more finely detailed parts of your prints. But right now, you just can't do that. Another missing piece, an enclosure. Although Prusa showed off part of an enclosure in the Exos launch video two years ago, the company still does not offer one for sale. The company has come forward with a few options that look good enough, but in my opinion, for a company to sell a consumer-oriented 3D printer without offering an enclosure is borderline irresponsible. Ignoring the need for an enclosure on high temperature filaments like ABS or ASA, these printers absolutely spew microplastics into the air and emit huge amounts of volatile compounds. I put my air quality meter next to my XL and it immediately went into the red as soon as I started printing. If this thing is going to be anywhere near your living space, an enclosure and ideally some sort of a filtration or venting system is a must. That wasn't a problem for me because this thing is so large, I actually had to do the assembly and testing out here in my garage. And that is the final drawback of the XL. It's massive. Now you can't fault the thing for having a big footprint given Prusa called it the XL, but what I was not expecting is how much room is needed above it for these outrageously huge filament tubes. Make sure you measure your printing space in all dimensions before you plunk down your cash for one of these. So am I happy with my XL? Yes and no. I do appreciate the extra size and I've been able to print some large batches in one shot that previously would have taken multiple jobs to complete. I also appreciate the ability to, for example, cancel individual models within those jobs. This saved me a lot of time and filament when one of my jobs started to fail after 10 hours when one tiny component started to lift off, but all the other ones were doing just fine. I also love the ability to do multicolor prints without a ton of waste. And now that I'm getting the hang of multi-material printing, I feel like there's a ton of potential there too. But it took so many filled prints to get there that I felt like I was back in the early days of 3D printing. And those days, they were not much fun. These days, the XL has a lot of competition from printers like the Bamboo X1 or the Creality K1 Max, which offer far more advanced software and even things like LiDAR scanners for failed print detection. But when it comes to large format, true multi-material printing, while this isn't perfect, and while it is extremely expensive, the XL has genuinely impressed me. I've been blown away by the quality and ease of printing large functional parts like this print sheet holder, and now that these things are finally shipping and you can get your own XL, I look forward to seeing what the community and Prusa can do to keep things moving forward. That's what I think about the Prusa XL, but let me know in comments what you think. Does the multi-material functionality of this thing make up for its multiple drawbacks, or are you more excited about what Creality and Bamboo are laying down these days? Please let us know down in comments, like and subscribe if you want to see more 3D printer content, and as always, check out Engadget.com for more news, reviews, and previews.